Howdy folks, AJ coming at you again, your resident vintage gamer, and what a day it has been. Unfortunately, I had to work today, so I was not able to watch the worldwide debut for EverQuest Next. I was not able to watch it live, because I, I had to work. So as soon as I got home, ran in, turned it on, you know, put on Twitch TV and found the video, the pre-recorded video, and started watching it, and to my surprise... My EverQuest 2 story made the video montage that they, they put in on the debut of about 15 of us sharing our stories, our EverQuest or EverQuest 2 stories. Mine was one of the ones that made the montage. So I was very, very, very excited to see that and uh, quite humbled and quite proud all at the same time. So uh, I will put a link uh, in the description below to, to the video to my video of my EverQuest 2 story, the one that they used in the montage. I will also put a link to the Twitch TV pre-recorded worldwide debut video for EverQuest Next, the one that I'm talking about. So that if you haven't seen either one of them and you wish to, you'll have the, the links to do so. So, now, on to the game itself. I went into this thinking that I, I had a lot of confidence based upon how much uh, hype was being built up by SOE and the fact that it had won, EverQuest Next had won two Best of Show awards, one from 10 Ton Hammer and the other one from MMORPG.com. Uh, it won Best of Show at E3, even though it wasn't debuted to the public at all. So I had a lot of confidence knowing that they were going to do something groundbreaking. And <laughs> no pun intended. And if you have seen the gameplay footage, you'll know why why I just said that. Because they are introducing several things that have never been done in a game before. They are, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because I, I really do think you should go and watch the video on the Twitch um, pre-recorded video um, to, to see it all yourself. Um, but I will give a little bit of my opinion on how I feel about some of these things. Number one, uh, they talked about changing the core gameplay on how uh, there's going to be a lot of classes and you're going to have to discover the classes as you as you explore through the world and quest and everything like that in order to take on that class as you, for yourself. Um, they didn't go into any more detail than that. They just said there's going to be a lot of classes. You're going to start out with a basic class, and then you're going to discover all these other classes, and you're going to be able to um, morph, I guess, for lack of a better term, into another class or whatever as you go along. And I'm not really sure how I feel about that one at this point. I will have to, it, it, I'd have to see a lot more about that, a lot more in depth information before I can really. Um, give a, 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 a true opinion on that. Because in the Star Wars Galaxies uh, game that I've said before is my favorite game of all time, you had uh, different skill trees for 32 different classes. And when you got skill points, uh, you could distribute them you know, in certain boxes and so forth to do certain things. And it, what it did is it gave you, it gave you, there was no, there were no levels and there was no, you know, per se set class that you had to play if you started down one path or whatever. You could be a master doctor and, you know, master creature handler or something like that. I mean, you could mix it up to, to do these different things. And there may not have been enough skill points to do those two particular ones. But, so I'm sure somebody will correct me, but, like, for instance, I was a master ranger and a master rifleman. And so there was enough skill point. And then I think I had a few left over, and I was able to actually dabble a little bit into creature handling, just to look, just enough to be able to get a, a, a couple extra pets and things like that, which were, were kind of fun. But there were other all these different combinations you could do. Um, and if it's like that, if EverQuest Next, if their dynamic class system that they're talking about is similar to that, then I know I'll like it. If it's one of these things where you discover a new class and then you have to abandon whatever class you've been working on completely and start over on this, 
I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. I, I'd have to see a lot more about it to to be able to give a true opinion on that. So, um, on that one, that, that's that's all I can say on that at this point. Uh, one one of the other things that they talked about and they showed was that the world is going to be completely destructible. Uh, you can start digging and dig your way. They've they've built many tiers of the world, so you may dig your way into a subterranean cave or a lava flow or whatever, um, and you can also uh, rebuild certain things. And they went into a lot more detail. I'll let you see it on the on the video and everything. And that looks really really cool. Um, uh, the the potential there is is fantastic for what they can do with that. So uh, that I'm I'm really looking forward to. Uh, the one that probably impressed me the most was what they called emergent AI. And what in a nutshell, what that basically says is they have uh, their mobs in the game, whatever it is, orcs, trolls, whatever you know, gnolls, whatever they instead of having static spawns of these creatures and so forth, they basically create these creatures, NPCs, these creatures and everything, and then they just release them upon the world. And they and they have, through the coding, they have programmed these different mobs to have certain behaviors. And they gave an example of orcs not liking cities, so they would, they would naturally, once they release these orcs into the world, they're going to go away from cities. And they might set up camp near roads where they can waylay uh, travelers and so forth and as things change in the game it will change how they behave and so if the way an, a way of looking at it is um, the, I was thinking about today is if you've been if you've played any MMO and you are let's say you go to a certain little town and you're in the middle of leveling a guy or whatever you go to this town and you see another character there at the tavern or whatever and you can just about from from playing this content yourself it's always the same you can pretty much guess what that guy's content what he's going through right you can see what level he is and you can pretty much say oh yeah I know what he's doing he's he, he's got to go to the cave and he's got to get this and he's got to kill these things and that you 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 say yourself, I, I know exactly what that guy's doing because I've done it before and that's the content. There's no other content around here. That's got to be what he's doing. That's what's going to be different about this game, the way I see it. You may not, by the time, let's say you level, then you come back to this tavern a couple days later. The way they explained it is the mobs that you killed when you, for you to, while you were leveling, they might have uh, taken the hint because they've been beat down two or three times by several different players or whatever. Um, and they might have decided, hey, this is no longer safe. That intelligence, that AI is in the game, and they will leave that area because it's no longer safe. And then what they're also saying is those mobs may go and find reinforcements and bring them back because they know they need reinforcements because they haven't been strong enough in the, in the previous encounters when they've encountered people. And so now the next guy goes through there. There's not just the mobs that you went through tried to go through, or if you did go through them, or whatever, <laughs> they got backup. I mean, or they could be gone completely. They could have just deserted the thing. I mean, or this guy that you're watching at the tavern now, he might have gone out to some cave and decided, you know what, um, it's not enough that I just came in here and kicked the crap out of whatever, and I got this chest or whatever. I think I'm going to dig down and see what's down below underneath this cave. You can do that. And he might have found a whole new quest line underneath that, that cave in a, in a cavern underneath by digging down. I mean, that's the that is what impresses me about the the idea of this game that there's going to be different. There's going to be replayability like never. I mean, yeah, you, everybody is is rolled alts, and we've all had been altaholics and and done it, but it's always the same stuff. You're always grinding out the same content and everything. And they said this one, it'd be almost impossible to roll an alt and have the same experience you did with the character before. It's going to be completely unique. So that is what really impressed me about the, the debut. And I'm not going to go into a lot more detail about any, any of the other stuff. I really wish you guys would go and check it out for yourselves. 
But I did want to say uh, thank you to Sony for seeing fit to put me in the montage. I appreciate that very much. And uh, I'm really looking forward to... Oh, but, but before I forget, I almost forgot. They announced there's going to be another game. It's going to be called EverQuest Next Landmark. And that game is going to be out before the end of the year. And that game is going to allow players... You basically start out and you get a banner and you get to go out and you get to stake a claim and that's your land and then you have all the tools the same tools that the developers have they, they're giving them to the players and you can basically build anything that you want to on your land you can form it you can terraform it you can design it whatever you want to do and then they're going to allow the people that build things in that game to do two things. They're going to allow them to build things and then through the player studio sell them on the marketplace to try and make real money. Uh, and then they're also going to allow people in that game to design things and 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 uh, submit them for possible uh, integration into EverQuest Next before it launches. So that game will be out first and you'll be able to go crazy building and doing all these things and designing things and it, it apparently the tools are going to be very user friendly very easy to use and then you could try and sell this stuff on the marketplace to make a little bit of money and you can submit it and say hey I think this would look really cool in EverQuest Next and they may put it in the game and this is the first time that's ever been done before where players will actually be able to impact the game before it launches with things that they've created so, um, just uh, groundbreaking. And, of course, like I said, no pun intended because of the whole destruction thing. But, because they did show them breaking ground. So, anyway, it, it just head spinning. Uh, you know, don't know where. I'm thinking, okay. Uh, oh, oh, almost forgot another thing. The beta uh, for EverQuest Next, they're taking, you can sign up for the beta now. Go to everquestnext.com, and right on there, it'll say apply for beta, and you can apply for it right now. So there's there's another thing. Uh, so it's been a bit, it's been a crazy day. So um, I think uh, a lot of people are complaining about they didn't care for the the stylized graphics um, that they showed for EverQuest Next. Um, I'm not gonna pass judgment at this point. It's way too early to to as far as I'm concerned, um, until I can get my hands on it and play it and see how it feels and how it looks when I'm playing it and everything else. I'm not going to try and pass judgment on it at this point. It's way too early for that. So anyway, uh, that's enough of me talking. So until next, next time, guys, we will catch you on the flip side.